Well, here I am. 2 a.m. on a damn school night. Lying in bed, unable to sleep again. On my laptop writing this. I'm writing to get my story out. To let someone know what happened. But Lord knows I can't speak about this to anyone around here. I live in a smallish town, situated directly on the nose, if you will, of Iowa, where the Mississippi bends back toward the center of the states. I'm not going to give the name of the town. However, if you want to do some research, I'm not going to stop you. There's a park located on the edge of town. It's pretty popular. There are a lot of houses there. A small kids area, an aquatic center, some tennis courts, bike trails, and the community college campus. Flowers are abundant in the park, and the city takes good care to make sure that a display of colorful and well-kept flowers stay that way. There is also a husk of what used to be a zoo, which housed an array of animals, from cobras to monkeys. This park has always been a big part of the community, and there are several well-known structures in there, which are used or mentioned in some way or another, which is strange why no one ever talks about the bandstand. The bandstand is a large stone gazebo fixed on the very edge of the main flat, which is used for nothing. Nothing ever happens there. No bands play. They used to, but not anymore. It's about eight feet in height, where the ground is the highest up around it, 20 feet across in any given direction and octagonal in shape. There is a cone-like roof over the top of the structure. When I said that the bandstand gets no use, it may have been a slight exaggeration. Every so often, a group of stoners or just some kids will drag a park bench over, hop on top of it, and crawl up into the thing. I've been up there myself, as a group of friends and I often parkour, and it's a prime sight. We become pros at getting up into it without the assistance of a park bench. There isn't much up there. Usually it's filled with faded chalk writings from previous groups of teenagers, who also leave the box behind for the next group to leave their mark. But that's it. No officials ever use the place. The gothic-style gate to the entry stairs is chained and locked with an old-style iron lock. It's rusty and dingy. When you are up in the bandstand, you can go down the stairs. They gently wind down around the center of the structure. When you reach the bottom, you can look at your friends or whatever dumb shit you may be doing at the gate. But at the end of the landing platform, to your left, if you are looking out, is a door. The door is solid iron, or steel, fuck, I don't know, metal, solid, hard, cold, black metal. It's about five feet tall, which is rather short. It is chained several times over. It's locked with the same old gothic lock as the gate. It appears to have not been open in 60 years. There's rust, spider webs, dust, and all manners of grime and disgustingness covering it. I've never seen or heard about anyone using this door for anything. It's just there, peeking, staring out from the gate into the open, forlorn. The first real encounter I had with this door was during a film project I was working on. At the time, I was a junior in high school. It was for an art scholarship. I had decided after many failed comedy scripts to make a horror short film. A generic slasher slash stalker slash silent scary guy moving when you aren't looking film. The antagonist was named Reeves a man whose face was terribly scarred and who wore a dark gray business coat with a hoodie underneath. I made the prosthetic mask and provided the costuming. 
It was an extremely low-budget film, but it was sort of meant to be. It was first-person, Blair Witch style. Probably a bad call. The center of the story was this door. This black, solid metal door that never moves. That is rarely even looked upon. That is hardly recalled in even the most stoic of memories. Reeve emerges from the door to wreak havoc on the group of teenage filmers meddling with the power beyond their comprehension. The film never really went anywhere. I submitted several graphic designs and digital media projects instead. But this door, the door which had no name, the door which is neglected and rejected and left to rot in its own filth and bile, it fascinated me. I had always kind of looked and hoped for something spectacular in this world of normal. Something that would inspire wonder or maybe fear a monster. A hidden place full of magic or a new sort of species of talking animal something. But I'm reaching a point in life where I must put the childish hopes and wonder and adventure to rest. Or so I thought. I tried to research this door. The door which is called nothing. That is what I found. Nothing. No specifics. Nothing. I had asked around my intermediate peers. My mom said it was probably used for decoration storage. Chained. And this thing hadn't been open for decades. And it is solid metal. I don't think decorations were in mind when this place was made. I figured I would just investigate this door myself. So I grabbed a sleeping bag and a flashlight, a stethoscope my mom had in her med kit since she's a registered nurse. I decided it would be a good idea to go into that wrecked place and spend the night, gathering whatever information I could about that door that captivated me. It was so fascinating. It was just amazing. The door was wonderful. I couldn't stop thinking about it. It with no name. This is the worst idea I ever had. When I was younger, I swiped some nudie mags from a friend's dad. Up until that night, that was the worst thing I've ever done. But no, this door yields results that I could have never imagined. The log below contains details that I recorded in a journal during my time at that gazebo. 8 p.m. I arrive. Nothing is happening. It's dusk and people are beginning to leave the park. I lay low, watching for any possible staff driving by, as the park typically closes at 10. 9 p.m. It's dark now. The only light is from the street light, about 40 feet away. It hardly reaches the bandstand. The air is chilly. I can say that I'm genuinely uncomfortable, even despite being within the line of sight of at least nine different households. 10 p.m. The park is closed. I put quotes around that because there's no gates or anything to make the park literally closed. I've been listening to music since I got up here. It's about 40 degrees out. 10.30 p.m. I can't hold out any longer. I creep down the stairs to the door which isn't recalled. I tap on the door and hear a clear echo inside. Nothing out of the ordinary. 11 p.m. I grabbed my stethoscope. I put it to that glorious door. I heard nothing. I decided to hold my position while tapping and manipulating the chains on the door. 12 a.m. I've heard something. I uh, I can't believe it, but I, I heard something inside. Nothing otherworldly, though. I heard a faint sound, which I concluded was the sound of bees. 12.10 a.m. I still hear the bees. It started suddenly around midnight. Just the sound of bees, maybe three or four of them. I don't know. 
12.30 a.m. Bees, 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 buzz, bees. I'm really tired. 1 a.m. The bees stopped, finally. Fuck, I mean, shit. I listened to the bees for a whole hour. Now there's nothing in there. Nothing. How did the bees even get in there? There's literally an airtight seal on this door. No other point of entry into this area exists. 3 a.m. I think I heard something. 3.30 a.m. I really think I heard something. 3.45 a.m. That was something. There was something in there. I heard something. 3.50 a.m. Shit, it's only been five motherfucking minutes. It feels like it's been an hour. 4 a.m. There was fucking something in there. I heard something. I heard it. It, it was a whisper. One word. Unintelligible. One word. I don't know what it said. I, I could only make it out. It was a low, hush, and raspy voice. Fuck me, fuck me. What am I doing here? Is this even real? Just calm down, calm down. It, it was nothing. You're tired, you're, you're cold. Go to sleep. 10 a.m. I'm awake now. I still think I heard something, but I'm not delusional anymore. I'm rested up. 10, 10 a.m. I found a dead bee in my sleeping bag. Someone has to be fucking with me. A single dead bee. I'm done here. I'm going home. I get scared easily. I've been called Super Weenie Hut Jr. on occasion. I was terrified that night. It was a little over a year ago, and shit, I, I wouldn't be here if things hadn't acted up again. My lord, what have I done? Fuck, fucking with that door. I was lying in bed a couple weeks ago. I woke up around two in the morning. I went to take a piss. My TV was still on as usual and Adult Swim was playing. I slunk back into bed and began to drift off to sleep. I had a dream. I can recall the dream in vivid detail. I felt like it lasted maybe four seconds. It was a bee's face, and the sound of buzzing was just overwhelming. I woke up. Literally within the same minute, I fell asleep. I didn't try to sleep again the rest of the night. I haven't slept since then. Believe me, I've tried. It's no use. I keep seeing a damned bee. The bees. It's fucking ridiculous. I mean, superstition? Supernatural? No, the closest thing I've ever come to... That is a, a playthrough of condemned criminal origins for the PC. This stuff doesn't actually exist. The dream thing doesn't happen, but it is somehow. It's happening to me. I decided to go back to that door with the lack of moniker. It always has been in the back of my mind. What's behind that door? So I did go back last week. I went there in the dead of night once again. I heard the bees, this time in an overpowering amount. And then I heard it. A word, a short, raspy word of which the likes have never been uttered before. I heard, hide. The voice told me to hide, and in that instance I did. I got the feeling of fear that starts in your chest and just radiates outward. It's cold and uncomfortable, and I was overcome with paranoia. I jumped out of the gazebo and ran through the night. I live 15 miles away, only accessible by means of highway. I was terrified. I still am terrified. I turned to look behind me, and there was nothing. I turned back to running, and I stopped dead. Around 50 feet in front of me was a figure. Very, very thin. It had long legs, but a normal body size. It was kind of hobbled over, crouched and within the reach of light from a street lamp. 
It was contorted and naked looking, and from what I can tell, covered in bees. It was just looking at me, not moving, not breathing. It was dark out. I didn't even know what the fuck it really looked like, just thin. I blinked and it was about three feet closer to me. I freaked the fuck out. I wanted to turn and run, but I felt like I needed to stare at it. I heard the bees buzzing. Those damned bees, they're fucking everywhere. I finally decided to run. I looked back every so often to check if that fucker was after me. I saw no sight of him. I made it to my car and started it. I sped home. And now I'm here. I live in a secluded house surrounded by the woods. Every once in a while, late at night, I can make out the faint sound of bees in the distance when all else is silent. I don't know if it's actual bees or if it's him. It's probably him. Coming for me. I I know it's him. He who is the product of that door which is called nothing. I still don't know what the fuck he is. Where he came from. Why is he here? Why does he exist? I named him the Wretch of Weed Park. And he will come for me. And he will kill me. Maybe. I don't know. He's out there, though. Outside my window. In the dark. Watching me. The scariest part to me is the fact that he's obviously sentient. Self-aware. It's not like a bird watching you. The bird isn't thinking anything. It's just looking at you. This thing, though, this wrench... It's not only looking at me, it's watching me. I can feel it, I can hear it even now as I'm writing this huddled in my bed, scared shitless for my life, and in wonderment of what has transpired, I can feel him. He's thinking about me, practicing restraint, practicing patience, the masterwork of a predator. I don't know if he wants something maternal other than my flesh I just I don't know how any of this happened all I wanted to know was what that door was about and now I know it was made to house that malevolent evil and I've unleashed it don't come here don't Ooh, I really hope you ghouls loved this one. I really like narrating it. I got really into character. I got like so into it. I put myself in there and I, I actually got freaked out as if I was, you know, the actual person in this story. So it's probably why I stumbled over my words a little bit because like when you're freaking the heck out, you know, you're going to stumble a little bit. But I really hope you enjoyed this one. It was really good. Surprisingly. Another reason not to go camping? <laughs> uh, let's see. Secret word will be gazebo. Or if you can't spell it, bandstand. Because that's what they called it in the beginning. That way I know you ghouls have gotten to the end of this end slate. Um, as always, the last video will be on the top left. The next video will be on the bottom left. All my social medias are on the screen as well as in the description box below. And remember, there's always someone or something watching you.